Hello guys, my name is Don and you're watching my channel Don Astronomy. Just setting up my mount now. Uh, that little spirit level on top is a really handy little device. It cost me about four dollars. It's like a little plastic disc. I trust it much more than a phone. What I'm doing with that leg I got my hand on is I'm facing that towards my south celestial pole because my counterweight's going to be hanging over that. Um, it's reinforcement for that side where all the weight is. Helps balance the scope a little bit better. Um, and that's my opinion anyway. I don't really need a compass. I know where my self celestial points. My observatory telescope, when it's in its home position, points that way, so I've got a rough idea of where it is. If I was shooting out in the field somewhere else, yes, I'd need probably a compass. Now, putting on the counterweight now, not a good idea to do it with the weight on, but I'm cheating. I know that it's uh, balanced to my setup. Just mounting my um, dovetail bracket with my ball head mount for my camera. Now mounting uh, my computer and the guide scope. So very modular, which I'm liking. Okay, time for the camera to go on. The camera I'm using is a Sony A6400 and I'm using a Sigma 16mm f1.4 lens so it's very wide and uh, very fast so it's ideal for Milky Way photography which I intend to do tonight so just powering everything up now and it's a big advantage doing everything in the light and I'm not fumbling around the dark trying to do stuff and uh, I can get it all balanced and ready to go okay it's polar alignment time so I've just opened sharp cap my camera's already connected, so I just have to go to the toolbar there and click Polar Align. And now it's going to tell me um, to hit the next button there when I'm ready to start the process. And uh, so once I click that next, it will then try to find enough stars. If it doesn't find the stars, you might have to do some adjustments until it finds enough stars to be able to go to the next step, which it has there. And it's essentially now telling me to rotate the deck axis 90 degrees and it only has to be rough and then it should start to uh, find the stars in that position and then once it's done that as you can see pretty quick it will start to do calculations and give an error message and there it is there on the screen so from this point here now it's it's a matter of adjusting my deck axis and my right ascension axis until I get that error message as low as possible. And what is nice about SharpCap is it pretty much tells you what direction to go. As you can see there, it's got uh, right and down. So I need to go right and on my RA and down um, on my deck. So it gives the reading in arc minutes and seconds, which is really handy. And essentially I want to get as close to a zero error as possible. I'm actually shooting this at three times speed just to make the process a little more exciting for you guys. Uh, but really it only takes a few minutes. This whole process is pretty quick. The What I'm trying to do is to get, as you can see the power alignment is good now, I'm trying to get to excellent. but. I'm doing a real wide field Milky Way shot, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Close is good enough. If I was shooting, you know, like a galaxy and using a much longer focal length, I would have to really hone down my uh, accuracy until I got into the excellent range and as close to zero as possible. But for now, this will work just fine for me tonight. So now I can turn sharp cap off, I can exit the program, I will now shut my computer down. I don't need it anymore. 
So I'm going to put my telescope back into its home position and what I'll do is I'll take off the computer and the guide the scope because I don't need it anymore. The idea was just to get polar aligned so then I can just start to take shots of the Milky Way with my camera only. I have no idea if this is recording or not. It's my little setup and it feels weird. I think my camera's run out. I've been shooting the Milky Way and I'm not sure how that's going because uh, the camera when it's on continuous mode uh, it doesn't show pictures so you can't tell if it's working or not and now I'm also um, got the other rig up and running I'm just checking my guiding before I start to um, shoot this target it's a needle galaxy multitasking tonight like Chuck and not only that, I'm cooking dinner at the same time. Okay, get rid of that. Get rid of that. So you learn by your mistakes, and that's what I've done. Um, it's all a learning curve. I, on the first night, which is the footage you've been watching, I did not have continuous shooting mode on. So I tracked for two hours and uh, took one shot. So it didn't really work out at all. The second night, however, had clear skies again, which was great. This time though, I had my shooting, my continuous shooting mode working, uh, but unfortunately I forgot to track. So two hours of taking images, uh, no tracking. But I did manage to make a time lapse, so it wasn't totally wasted. Um, Night three, luckily clear skies again. I finally got it right. I got my continuous shooting mode working. I had 200 shots and I had my tracker working and pole alignment was all done. And uh, I used, I'm only experimenting with this. So I've used an ISO 1000. I went for 30 second exposures. I went to F1.8 as opposed to the full F1.4 the camera's capable of just to get it a little bit more sharper. I think I used about 4,000 Kelvin. The only problem was though, is um, with the Sigma 16 millimeter lens, it's an electronic focuser. And uh, I did focus it, but I must have bumped it. And I've learned now that you can actually turn a feature on to lock that, but it wasn't uh, the case this night and I had bumped it. So the stars end up being a little bit out of focus, but hey, it's, uh, it's a learning curve and it's clouded over now, so I just want to get this video out and I'll reveal that image and, uh, and thanks for watching guys. <laughs>